NICO is the largest employer in Lewis, New York. Larry Deso has worked here 40 years. Well, NICO is a good place to work and there's very few jobs in this area. Deep under tons of rock in this massive pit, the company finds the mineral Wallace tonight which is crushed into a fine powder and used in many products, including paints and plastics. But after 30 years of digging at this mine, the supply of Wallace tonight is running out. We have two years under our present permit, and we have one final permit in that the, the state's reviewing right now that would add another three years at the most. NICO has discovered a new supply right next to its current mine. There's actually hundreds of feet of wall that's just wall stenite ore. There's probably a million tons there. Buckley says that could extend the life of this mine another 8 to 10 years. But the land, about 200 acres, known as Lot 8, is owned by New York State and sits on the very edge of the protected State Forest Preserve. NICO is offering to swap about 1,500 acres of property nearby to be added to the preserve that the company says includes trout and salmon streams and best of all, will provide new access to the eastern side of the Jay Mountain Wilderness. The state land is basically inaccessible now. This will open up several miles of road frontage. But since the land is protected as forever wild, the swamp will require the approval of both lawmakers and voters to amend the state's constitution. The New York State Legislature has already voted twice in favor of the deal. And now state voters will get their say on Election Day. Can't believe we would allow that to happen. Dan Plumley with the group Adirondack Wild is among those hoping to convince voters to say no. He says this is the kind of Adirondack wilderness the state constitution is supposed to protect. This tremendous sugar maple, 30, 30 inches diameter right there. It's a very rich site. Lumley has supported land swaps in the past that have helped communities in need run power and water lines through the Forest Preserve or expand municipal airports and cemeteries. These are appropriate, limited, narrow uses of the constitutional amendment uh, for removing lands in a very limited fashion for municipal purposes. Uh, that makes sense, and the people of New York State have supported those actions. But this is a very different, the NICO uh, deal is a very different animal. Uh, it is a private corporation that has other lands that have demonstrated um, uh, will Astonite Holdings, but we only have one forest preserve. And if aspects of it become of interest to international uh, mining conglomerates, uh, as in this case, and then pieces of the Forest Preserve get removed because of their mineral value, uh, Forever Wild uh, doesn't mean forever anymore. But other environmental groups, including the Adirondack Council and Adirondack Mountain Club, are backing the swap, saying the trade will benefit the state and local economy and help keep workers like Larry Deso on the job for at least another decade. Well, the younger guys, you no, know, it's a concern for them, definitely, because you know they got another 20, 30 years or longer. You know, a new hired guy might be, say, 25 years old, and he's planning on a career here. You know, they're going to need this. That's also why many community leaders are supporting it as well. The problem with with the mining company is once they're gone, they're gone, and what will we replace it with? I mean, I don't see anything on the horizon that's coming into our small communities that are going to replace this kind of job. I mean, it's a family-sustaining job. They pay good, good wages, they have benefits, they have retirement. Um, you know, we're just, we just don't replace those jobs when they're lost in the Adirondacks. We get tourism-related jobs, and if you don't own the business, you're making minimum wage. So um, it's, it's critical. And with us at the roundtable this week is Mark Buckley, NICO's Safety and Environmental Manager, and John Brott, who is a spokesman with NICO. You've been trying to really get the word out to millions of voters here in New York State before Election Day. That's got to be 
a huge challenge. It's quite a challenge, Tom, it really is. We have to convince voters in Buffalo and Manhattan, um, even in Albany, that something that's taking place in the Adirondack means something to them and that they should care enough about it to hopefully vote yes on election day. So it's, it's quite a challenge. And you're on the ballot with one of the biggest questions to come along in years on expanding casino gambling in New York. What's the consensus? Is uh, Does that help or hurt your chances of getting voters to say yes? We're, we're really hearing all across the spectrum here. We, we've heard some people who say people are gonna vote yes all across the ticket. We have people who say they'll vote no. Well, we're hoping that people are going to look at each individual proposition, of course, and, and vote based on the merits of that proposition and how they feel about that. And for the first time in, un, in a number of years, it's on the back of the ballot. Uh, is that a concern? Uh, we, we, people have to look for it. Um, on, the new, on the new paper ballots that we have, all of the local elections or statewide elections are going to be on the front, but you are going to then have to turn the uh, card over to deal with the six propositions. So, yeah, we hope that people will remember to do that. Uh, the strongest voter turnout is expected to be in New York City for the mayor's race. Millions of voters who live hours, five hours in many cases, from the Adirondack Park probably don't know a thing about the Forest Preserve, the overwhelming majority of them. So how have you tried to educate and win them over? What have you been doing to try to uh, to get to them? Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh Well, what we've been doing is uh, through with John and his, uh, his group, uh, We've uh, done some, we're starting to do some advertising. We're also hitting, uh, you know, do getting um, word out to uh, editorial boards and doing a lot of, uh, uh, say, uh, bringing uh, groups in, such as newspapers or television stations into the, the area to look at the properties that NICO is willing to exchange for the land showing them not only lot eight, but the land that they will be getting in exchange for um, the use of lot eight. Yeah, just last week you had the New York Times yeah. up and, and that's what you're counting on, is that uh, an article in the New York Times will get to uh, a lot of those That's gonna reach voters. a lot of people. We're also extremely fortunate that we have a very broad uh, group of supporters um, uh, uh, who have influence across the state that are in favor of Proposition 5. From environmental groups to labor unions like the United Steelworkers and the AFL-CIO, uh, we received an endorsement just recently from the New York League of Conservation Voters, which we think is, is hugely influential, particularly downstate. We have business organizations, we have local governments, not only here in the Adirondacks, but across the state. The New York State Association of Counties, which represents all 62 counties in the state, has endorsed Proposition 5. So we're, we're relying on them and counting on them to get the word out to their constituency across the state. People may wonder why would the unions uh, get involved with this, uh, because of the jobs at stake. Yeah, we, uh, we have the United Steelworkers <clears throat> at NICO, have for many, many years very skilled, uh, well-paid, and uh, conscientious workforce. And uh, there, um, there's uh, about uh, 80 members uh, of the United Steelworkers working at NICO. Uh, our payroll is $6 million, so that's not insignificant among the, the Steelworkers membership. And they are interested in keeping these jobs here. What's and the average pay for a, a, a miner with uh, NICO? They're making, the average pay at NICO is $53,000 a year. And compared to other jobs in Essex County, they're probably some of the best paying jobs in the county? Significantly higher, correct, yeah. And you believe this is a good trade, that the 1,500 acres you're offering in exchange for the 200 right on the edge of the Forest Preserve, literally right next <laughs> to your existing mine, is, a, is yeah. a good deal for New York and for the State Forest Preserve? Oh yes, it, it's definitely a good deal. Uh, the lands that NICO is willing to exchange have um, some great recreational um, uh, advantages compared to Lot 8. Lot 8 is hard to access. It's actually almost isolated by lands NICO owns now. It's hard to get to. Uh, it doesn't have any um, uh, streams or brooks or, or wetlands on the property as compared to the property that we're willing to exchange, we have uh, about three miles of uh, stream frontage. Mm -hmm. We have numerous wetlands, hiking opportunities, uh, road frontage for access to the state lands that are basically blocked by the lands that we own now, and some of our large 
landowner neighbors, the, the eastern side of the um, Jay Wilderness area is isolated because of not only our lands, but other people that have large tracts. And <coughs> the recreational opportunities for the average New Yorker are non-existent from that side of the So this wilderness. opens up new access to the oh. Jay Mountain Wilderness Range. Uh, correct, correct, yeah. Uh, probably about four or five miles of uh, road frontage, too. And when you talk about Lot 8, that's the 200 acres right next to mm -hmm. your current mine, there is an old growth forest, as some of the opponents have, have argued. Uh, I know everyone's definition can, can mm -hmm. be different about mm -hmm. what exactly is old growth forest uh, and be open to interpretation. You folks don't believe that, that there's old growth trees there. No, there's a, there's a partnership between um, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and the New York uh, SUNY uh, School of Environmental Science and Forestry. They have a partnership called the New York Her Natural Heritage Program, and they sent their staff people out, scientists out onto Lot 8. They looked at all the resources there and concluded that it's not an old growth forest. Those comments were, were echoed by the Adirondack Council, who also sent their scientists out and concluded that there are no um, significant ecological, biological, wildlife, or recreational resources on that property. You mentioned the Adirondack Council, also the Adirondack Mountain Club, two of the state's biggest environmental groups are backing this. They, they see it as a good trade. They, they recognize the, the economic benefit. Yeah, you know, if you, if you listen to, you know, everything that the council and the Mountain Club have said, they believe that the land that is coming into state ownership, the 1,500 acres, is far superior from both an ecological, environmental, and recreational resource, and, and, and they've said that on countless occasions. Uh, for the other smaller groups, the two or three opposed to this, uh, one of their arguments is that there really isn't a, a real public need here that unlike other amendment questions in recent years that have traded land to expand cemeteries or airports, water lines or, or a power line to get power from uh, from southern St. Lawrence County to Tupper Lake, that power line just a couple of mm -hmm. years ago, they don't see a pressing public need. Uh, they point to the fact that you have another mine within a couple of miles of your current mine that you could start using and that the site in the Forest Preserve isn't your only option. How do you respond to that? Well, we do have another mine within a couple miles of where we're mining now. And, uh, but th there's about 20 years of reserves there. We have about five years of reserve where, where we're mining now, right next to the land that we want to trade for. Um, that's 25 years of reserves. Now, we would like to add another 10 years of reserves to our guaranteed life in Essex County. And the best way to do that is to do it now. And before we have to move the, the infrastructure at the Lewis mine over to Oak Hill, the other mine, we would want to um, finish the mining in that area. It, it makes economic sense instead of spending several million dollars to move um, the electrical services, the crushers, and th that sort of uh, um, equipment. We'd want to finish at the area, where, area if we're at. If we move, we probably won't go back. It, it, we'd have to go through this whole amendment process again in the future, which I don't think would, would happen as far as we're concerned. And the other advantage is, again, I want to emphasize that we will, we will open up areas of the J wilderness area that right now you, you can't get to. Mm -hmm. And 1,500 acres as opposed to 200 acres. And then when you're done with the lot eight, the 200 acres, eventually that will go back to the state as well. That'll go back into the preserve. Uh, we'll reclaim it as per the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation requirements. We have to submit a reclamation plan before we even take a shovel foot full of dirt off the site, and it has to be approved by the DEC, that plan will be um, enacted before we leave the site when we're done mining. We have to reclaim the site. You know, this is a de the decision that, that the people across New York State are going to make uh, next week, but it's really an investment in the future. Um, this, is, this proposal is all about keeping NICO in the Adirondacks keeping its 100 jobs in the Adirondacks for as long as possible. And no matter how you look at it, uh, Willastonite is a finite resource. 
at some point the Oak Hill mine is going to be out of Wollastonite. Well, there's an opportunity right now to move right next door to our existing mine and extend those jobs and that business for another 10 years. No matter how you look at it, it's an extension of, of the business in the Adirondacks. We haven't heard you frame it this way, but has the company said anything that if they don't get this approved, that this will jeopardize those jobs from staying for another 20 or 25 years as, a, as opposed to 35 or 40? Has the company made any sort of uh, indication that if this doesn't get approved, it, it may look at leaving? No, the company certainly hasn't made that uh, um, statement. The reality of uh, the business world is, is once you get below 20 years reserves, our customers will start looking for another source. Uh, I don't know if they all will or just a few will, but uh, customers want a quality source and a source that can supply them into the future. So once we get below that certain finite amount, there's going to be, they're going to say, well, we need a second source. We got to look to our future. So once we get below, 20 years is a good cutoff, is one that's used in the industry. We may start losing customers slowly. So if we can show our customer base that we have 30 or 35 years of res reserves, then they'll be much more at ease in doing business with us. Back to the question of the public need. Uh, the opponents again would say that this sets a precedent, that it's helping out a private company for profit, mm -hmm. and that again, most of the amendment questions are somehow tied to a, to a, a public project or, or a project that has public need or public good. You would argue that there has been precedent when it comes to a private company being the focus of an amendment question in the past. Yeah, there was, a, there was a similar proposition in 1979, I believe it was, with international paper and the state exchanging lands and a far greater magnitude than we're talking about, somewhere in the seven to 10,000 acres. Uh, you know, I think the, the question of precedent, um, when the Constitution, when the state Constitution was created, when the Forest Preserve was created, there is a provision for amending that Constitution, and it's an opportunity for New York State voters to look at a particular situation and say, should we make an exception here because the merits of this case warrant it? And we think that's the case here, and you no, know, if Proposition 5 is to pass on Tuesday night, and we hope it, certainly hope that it does, that will have absolutely no bearing on any future proposal of this type that may come forward, whether it's next year or 10 years from now. Anytime there's a proposal to take land out of the forest preserve, it has to go through the same arduous process, be approved by the state legislature twice, and then go to the state of the voters, and in each instance, they look at that decision based on the, the circumstances of that particular case and what the benefits are. And in this particular case, we think the benefits to the public are such that it deserves a yes vote. And unlike the vote in 79, which uh, involved a lot of timber land near Speculator, uh, International Paper wanted to consolidate its timber lands, wanted to get access to those timber lands, which that, mm -hmm. which that deal did. This is a case where it's literally next door on the absolute edge Correct. of the forest preserve. Yeah, our, our existing uh, quarry is within 50 feet of lot eight right now. So the so impact uh, would be minimal? Very, very minimal. Uh, of the 200 acres that, uh, that, cons uh, that makes up lot eight, uh, we're looking at maybe 50 acres that will disturb and we'll access that 50 acres from our own land right now. We won't be building a road through the wilderness to get to it. It's, it's right there. And there is a significant public benefit here. Uh, you know, the beneficiary here is not just NICO Minerals, the business. The, the beneficiaries are the 100 employees and their families who work here. The other businesses in the region that rely not only on NICO, but on NICO's employees for their sustenance. It's the not-for-profit organizations in the community that NICO supports philanthropically and that the employees volunteer for. And again, those employees would likely not be here in the community if it wasn't for NICO. It's the 1,500 acres that are going into the State Forest Preserve that are open for the benefit of anyone in the state who, who wants to access them. And it's also the wollastonite. I mean, wollastonite is one of these minerals that probably most people have never heard of but everybody uses every day um, in a variety of products from auto parts to dinnerware to 
um, the paints and coatings, it's, an, it's a replacement for asbestos. Um, if it's not coming from here in our mine in the Adirondacks, the other main competitors are in China and India. Um, this is a product that is exported out of the Adirondacks and brings money back into the Adirondacks. We think there's a, many public benefits to this proposition. And that would be why you have a lot of community leaders, uh, uh, legislators, uh, former Assemblywoman Teresa Sayward has mm -hmm. been working mm -hmm. on this the full 10 years she was in the Assembly exactly. and beyond. Uh, they would argue that economically this has a huge impact. I would say so. Um, you know, Senator Betty Little the other day uh, was speaking about this, and she made the point that in Manhattan, 100 jobs are probably a deli. In the Adirondacks, it's a community. I mean, it, it's a huge impact. And um, yeah, uh, and, and NICO, you know, does business as far away as vendors in the Capital District, in the Albany area, there are, there are, the impacts just ripple out across the state. And as we heard uh, a little bit earlier from one of the workers there, Larry Diso, uh, for many people this is a career. They, they yes. have made a career. He was, he's been with the company 40 some years. Yes, uh, last year we had uh, three people retire with 40 years plus service. Uh, the year before that we had two with 40 plus. We've had one retire this year so far with 40 plus. Um, we have uh, gentlemen who have retired who have sons, nephews, brothers. It's also a lot of these, they're, f they're family jobs. This is what they've grown up doing. There's a couple guys that their grandfathers worked there back in 1953 when the place opened. It's, this is not a here today, gone tomorrow type business. We're here for the long run. And you're putting a real push on this last weekend uh, to try to get the word out. You have uh, uh, radio and TV ads on across the state. Uh, focused downstate, focused in the suburbs of New York City. Uh, obviously, yeah, probably the, most of the voters the are. The majority of the voters this. are down there. They're far away. They may not be familiar with the issue. So we're we're running a very modest, um, by New York City standards, very modest advertising campaign to try to get the word out and help people understand what this is all about and why they should vote yes when they go to the polls on Tuesday. All right, John Brott and also Mark Buckley. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank no, you, thanks Tom. for having us. Mm -hmm.